but you've had this big break now in between the qualifiers and the main draw. Do you think that's going to have an impact on you that you're quarantined and you're not being able to practice? You're under very harsh conditions. Do you think it's going to be really difficult to compete at the highest level? Uh, so we cannot practice for two weeks and um, I think this one has a huge impact and uh, also the, the chance for uh, injury is, yeah. is higher. Right, welcome back, tennis fans. We're bringing you a bit of an impromptu podcast this time, just because a lot of you've been calling out for it. There's players in quarantine. They're in Australia. They're 11 hours ahead. But doesn't mean we're going to stop bringing you uh, the content. And uh, yeah, we're going to be bringing you something hopefully very exciting on this podcast. Isn't that right, JG? Yeah, moving to the Australian Open. Obviously, the last podcast we did was the ATP Cup. ATP Cup. Now. Uh, it's all in Australia, but we're going to be doing the Grand Slam tournament. Uh, and we're speaking to someone who's in the hotel right now, uh, hoping to play soon. Well, hopefully it all goes ahead and everything happens. We never know really with, with the world right now. <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a funny one. We'll have uh, Henry Laxon and he'll be joining us at some point during the podcast. Uh, yeah, we're waiting for him to uh, jump in. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as he arrives. But uh yeah, it's been a bit of a weird uh, week. There's been a lot of stuff in the news. There's been uh, Djokovic. A lot of negative stuff. A lot of negative stuff. And the whole thing about Djokovic, I'm not sure it should be too negative. No. Because at the end of the day, he's just trying to make a few demands about what he thinks will help, not really him, more or less all the other players. Exactly. Um, That's what I think, personally. I think that yeah. Djokovic has been really harshly treated by the press, really. And they're calling him selfish. What's he selfish of? He doesn't yeah. need any. Like all the big players don't need any of this stuff that he's requesting. He's requesting it for all the people that are locked up in their rooms, just like the guy we're going to hopefully be speaking to very soon, uh, Henry Laxanen, and hopefully he can give us a good insight on what's going on there. But yeah, hopefully hey, we're going to go on. Sorry, sorry. I, I do have sympathy for the players in a way because it's not nice to be locked in your rooms all that for that amount of hours. Um, especially the quarantine hotels, like the ones where they're in real strict quarantine because they had a positive case on the flight. Yeah. They're, I don't know, is it going to really impact their tournament? Are they going to be able to play at the level they expect to be playing at? Is it going to be an unfair advantage to players who aren't in them uh, situations? Exactly, exactly. And uh, we've got actually Henry is just, has just jumped in and let's add him into the stream. Uh, one second. I've uh, created a new little background just for the uh, when we get people on. So here we go. We'll swap to the uh, and we'll bring you in. Hey, Henry, nice to see you again. Doing, mate? The first person to hey. be on the Game to Love podcast for a second time. So, yeah, really happy to have you on the podcast again. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks for <laughs> having me. Not a problem. Not a problem. How, uh, yeah, well, first off, uh, are you in the hotel room at the moment in uh, in Australia at the moment? Yeah, I have been here actually, uh, yeah, a little over one week already. Um, I arrived here on uh, Saturday from Doha and uh, it was an uh, unlucky one. We had uh, one positive case on the flight. Ah, uh, you was one of them ones. You was on the quarantine plane, so now you're really suffering, right? Yeah, I have been here eight, nine days already. Uh, I think yesterday I had my eighth uh, uh, COVID test. And, uh, wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> how, how are they? Sorry. How's the gag reflex? Is it getting improving? Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, sometimes we do also saliva tests, so this one is uh, more comfortable. And uh, yeah, actually, the first week uh, went pretty fast, or not fast, fast, but uh, I, I expected it's going to be worse. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's one of those uh, sort of thing. You're probably sort of getting used to it a little bit now, just being seeing those four walls that you're uh, surrounded by. Uh, but what's it like just being, uh, obviously, uh, are you just locked down to the room all day? You get so many hours out to go and practice a day or are you completely locked down? We are completely uh, locked down. <laughs> so, uh, uh, other players, they can uh, leave the room for five hours, uh, but we cannot leave at all. So, yeah, I have been here now eight days in a row, only in the room. Uh, what was funny, actually, uh, this morning I was doing some uh, some stuff and I opened two cans of uh, balls and uh, somehow I was able to lose one of the balls in my room. And it, <laughs> It's not the biggest room, but I have been looking for it now for one hour and no idea where it went. <laughs> I looked at every single place in my room, but can't find uh, one ball. Have you checked the window? Did it go out the window? <laughs> window is window is closed. Everything is closed. So I cannot understand where it is. I look wow. at everywhere. Can't find it. Yep. There's, there's no like ball boys in there coming along, collecting them up, just uh, <laughs> throwing them to you just to practice. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, it sounds, it sounds very bizarre. And I was actually uh, watching your uh, Instagram as well and uh, noticed you had a bit of a, a racket on a string. Uh, no, a ball on a string attached to your racket, sorry. And uh, yeah. just bouncing it like a, like a sort of like you get the table tennis ones. <laughs> Yeah, I did it. I did it yesterday, and uh, this ball I didn't lose yet, so maybe I should do with the other ones also that I attached to, <laughs> to, to my bracket. So. <laughs> Definitely. No, it's good that you're doing something, though. I can imagine it can be very boring right now. Um, how are you finding the actual hotel? Like, uh, there's some players complaining about the food or some of the services. I know that some of the in the, in the women's uh, hotel there was uh, like there was mice in some of the rooms. <laughs> you haven't had any issues with your room, have you? Um, well, I got the vacuum on my room and uh, like the first two, three days, uh, you could feel the dust a little bit, but it helped when I could uh, clean it a bit. And okay. uh, I mean, with the food, you know, uh, they, they provide us some food money so we can order Uber Eats or we can order uh -huh. some stuff from the um, supermarket. So it's not that bad, I think. And uh, I mean... Once we have the Uber Eats and those, we can order food or supermarket. I'm, I have been fine at least. And, mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, when we get uh, three food deliveries from the hotel, so I cannot complain myself at least. Uh, I mean, uh, the room is big enough. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, I would be about have... practice and uh, that's, uh, uh -huh. but that's the situation now. What can you do? Uh, have, have they been sending you any uh, interesting? Uh, you been getting a little bit of different Uber Eats? Is there some like maybe some kangaroo burgers over there, or what's going on? Um, no, actually, uh, uh, I have been the, ordering the same food the last three times now. Last three okay. days. So I found a really nice restaurant. Uh, the food is good, so I have oh, been cool. doing that one, and then hopefully after the quarantine, I. I can eat something else, and uh, usually they have really good food at the courts at uh, Australian Open. So I'm looking forward for that. I'm quite. No, you're like me, mate. When you find yeah. something you like, just stick with it. Why not? Yeah. You found the recipe. Keep going yeah. for it. What, what about um, your access to your coaches? Um, are you regularly seeing them, or are they not allowed? Are they not permitted to your, to come to your room at all? Um, no, uh, actually, here I'm alone. So. Uh, I don't have a coach with me, and I'm not sure how it works for the other players. But mm. if I'm not wrong, it's not allowed to see your coach. You can see him or her only during the practice times when he, when they are going to the courts. So I don't okay. know how it's for the people in the hard lockdown, but I can imagine that uh, they are not allowed to see their coaches either. Yeah, that makes uh, that makes total sense. Anyway, I mean. 
yourself, you're obviously uh, stuck on your own, as are all of the other players, I'm assuming, in the hotel. Have you been in contact with any of the other players, maybe? Just like and able to chat via video chat to a few of them, just to keep each other company, let's say, during this time? Um, not really that one, but Australian Open, I think they do it nice for, for players, like they are organizing, uh, we have a... Uh, uh, like a yoga lesson, and then we have a oh. spin, spinning lesson. We got the bikes to our rooms, so we have that one. We have uh, daily, um, daily things what they are organizing for us players, and then on top of that, we have a daily meeting. Uh, we get the information uh, what's the situation now with uh, with the lockdown and uh, other things as well. So. I mean, there is always uh, one, two, three meetings during the day to get some information about the situation, and they are organizing different uh, activities for us. Oh, nice. I'm going to yeah. go straight in with one of the bigger questions I had in my mind from before, and that was regarding, um, obviously, you had to go through the qualifiers, and most players, when they have the qualifiers, they have the free matches, and then you go into the main draw uh, not not long after. You've had this big break now in between the qualifiers and the main draw. Do you think that's going to have an impact on you? Plus the fact that you're quarantined and you're not being able to practice, you're under very harsh conditions. Do you think it's going to be really difficult to compete at the highest level, be in a Grand Slam tournament with all of the top players in the world? Is that really going to trouble you, you think? Um, yeah, I think, I'm not sure if it's 72 players in total, in yeah. total who, who is in the situation in a hard lockdown. Uh, so we cannot practice for two weeks. And um, I think this one has a huge impact. And uh, also the the chance for uh, injury is, yeah. is higher. We of course, have... yeah, that's a big thing, what people don't really uh, take into consideration. But staying still and not really being able to do the same routine you'd usually do you're definitely more prone to injuries, which would be, well, terrible. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And uh, also the conditions are not easy in Australia. Mm. It can be 40 degrees and then we have yeah. like a best of five, five sets. Then, uh, I mean, you're spending two weeks in your hotel room. That's for sure not the uh, best uh, preparation for that. And that's why the risk of injury is uh, much higher in our case, I think. But... Um, Anyway, yeah, sure, it's uh, it's different than to normal Grand Slam where you would play the qualies on the same course. Yeah. And we played in Doha, the course where conditions and everything was was something over there. And now we came to Australia. So usually here it's more windy or the wind is uh, more tricky because it goes around. You never know which direction is coming. Balls, they are probably going to be different course i don't think it's the same uh, same speed it's, it's impossible to have the same uh, conditions in doha course, yeah. here in melbourne so for sure that's uh, that's one thing but then for every player it's the same thing because i mean uh, every player is coming or most of it are coming from europe from different conditions so you just have to adapt to that one and the only problem is that one really that uh, we have to stay two weeks in that room and yeah. uh, we have only eight, eight, nine days time to prepare for for that of one. It's, it's not quite enough for a uh, best of five set match. And mm. how aware of you? How aware of it was you of uh, the conditions in Australia right now? So if you was to have a, a situation like you did on the plane with someone testing positive, was you aware of the fact that you would have to quarantine for such a long amount of time in your room? Uh, I wasn't aware of that one, but that wasn't either. Uh, my focus i didn't i didn't read the information or whatever they provided for players i didn't read those uh those detail sheets or fact sheets uh, because my main goal was to 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 play in doha and hopefully i can qualify so i was able to do that and uh, once i arrived here on saturday morning i heard that there was uh positive cases on the LA flight and Abu Dhabi flight and I heard also that they are not allowed to leave the hotel room for two weeks so then I was thinking okay okay let's hope I don't have that situation on my flight yeah uh, yeah I wasn't aware 
once I left from Doha that this could happen. I didn't even think about it, but that, that's. But would you have still came if you if you knew this was going to be the case? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many times I have been uh, in a Grand Slam main draw, and uh, I was happy to qualify through, and uh, that was my main course, goal. Yeah. It's a massive to, opportunity, to, isn't it? To, oh. to qualify through and be able to come to Melbourne, and uh, I really enjoy my time always in Melbourne and Australia. I uh, I really like it, so that was my uh, main goal uh, during the preseason. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy, and I would uh, come every time if I have a chance to play uh, France and Mendro. Yeah, I think you've got definitely still. You still got a decent chance as well. You've got to remember, every a lot of players are in the same boat as you as well. If you manage to draw somebody who happens to be in the same position as you in the first round, then you could quite easily well, you're even playing field then, yeah, so, yeah exactly you could and then you you're getting your warm up maybe through the first round maybe even the second round i mean last year you had an amazing match you went to five sets with alex de menor in australia it was ridiculous you know you came back from was it two sets down against him and uh with that crowd rocking going to be a bit different this year <laughs> obviously but uh yeah that one was just uh amazing and no wonder you want to just go back to australia no matter what the conditions considering how well you played last year so and plus, you've been playing very well i've noticed obviously in the qualifiers that match against uh borna goja is very impressive and it was a very tricky one uh but you come through it in the end yeah, sorry that sure. was 2019 wasn't it wasn't it uh not 2020 excuse me if i've got the year mixed up was that yeah. correct uh 2019 yeah yeah uh, Alex and uh, it was really nice uh, experience and the atmosphere was uh, amazing we played on uh, I don't know which court anymore but uh, <laughs> the was full and uh, I mean the spectators I played against the local local players so I was expecting it's going to be uh, difficult but uh, atmosphere and the spectators they were really fair and they were supporting me as well so uh it was one of my best experiences on a on a yeah. big full stadium so yeah that was uh, amazing and uh yeah about the matches in doha and uh, especially the last match uh, was also very tricky and uh, very. <laughs> it was serving very well so i had to change a little bit my uh, tactics i I went a bit further behind to to return that I will get a couple returns back and uh, that helped me especially in the second set and uh, I was starting to play better and better and uh, then until four all I was in the third set I was holding my serves pretty easily and yeah. I had on two or three games I had break points so I couldn't use them and yeah. then I lost my uh, serve on the five on the four all and yeah. And he was serving for the match on 5-4. He was 30 laugh up. And uh, then somehow I was able to turn it around still. So uh, I was That's just trying to fight. And uh, also on the second round match, I was uh, uh, set and break down. But uh, I was able to turn it around. So I'm really happy with that one. I wasn't playing my best tennis, but uh, I was able to fight and somehow came through. So... Uh, it's yeah, impressive. Very happy for that. Yeah, especially that Borna Gojo match. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we were both watching that one live just because I thought, come on, come on, Henry, you can get through into the uh, main draw. We were like willing you to go through. And when I saw that you were that breakdown at 5 4, I was like, come on, you come on, just break back. And then you got it back it to 5 4. Do you not think, Ben? We, no. both thought, we thought, I don't know, there's a chance here you can break back. We definitely believed in you at that moment because you was making a lot more indents in his service than what he was yours. And it seemed a bit unfortunate that he managed to break yours right at the death. Yeah, I think especially on that four-all game, I uh, I was playing a bit too aggressive and then I was doing the mistake. So, yeah, sure, he made a couple of good things on that game. But then, uh, yeah, I was playing a couple of bad shots, but... That can happen to everyone, and uh, it's a third set, and then uh, yeah, end of, uh, and nerves are playing games. So yeah. <laughs> definitely, yeah. And JG will be the uh, witness of this because 
I know that you you went seven five ahead, and when you hit the winner for seven five, I actually celebrated like you won the match because I forgot it was the super tie break, and then I saw you change ends. I was like, oh no, I've got to go through it all again. Got to watch yeah. it again. So yeah, luckily you was able to still stay composed though, and uh, yeah, ten seven in the tie break, fantastic. Yeah, it was a really really great uh, feeling after to to have qualified. I don't know. I did it in Australia once and then in in Paris. So it's only the third time that I qualified. So uh, really happy about that one. And yeah. And that's really yeah. And then a big news: when are you actually going to be let out your cage in Amer- in Australia right now? <laughs> when I get out from here is uh, <laughs> yeah. on Saturday on the thirtieth. So okay. I hope I'm going to go to practice then and uh, have to probably start pretty easy uh, if I didn't. Yeah, need- sure play for two actually it's gonna be even two and a half weeks i i wasn't allowed able to to practice so uh, yeah i have oh. to take it easy the couple uh, first days and then hopefully the body body starts to get going are you going to be uh like having hitting practice with any other players or would it just be with your personal coach um no i don't have my coach here um so oh, okay i will have oh. to to, to practice with the other players and uh, I will probably try also to get the sparring partner for the first two days and uh, yeah or first couple days uh, just not to go directly uh, to play points so that's that's I think the the risk <clears throat> yeah uh, where where the injury can happen so I try to build it up slowly with uh, hitting few balls and then slowly a few points so uh, well, hopefully. And then, how that... long from then is it until the actual yeah. tournament begins? How long do you have? Well, actually, we get out on Saturday, and there is this ATP 250 tournament in uh, before Australian Open. Yeah. So uh, they are saying, I mean, if I get out on Saturday, we would have the first matches on Monday, Tuesday, which is coming very fast. So I have to see what I do with that one. And then for the Australian Open, I think it starts Sunday, Monday or Tuesday, then the next week. So for that, it's one week at least time to to prepare. So, uh, I mean, it helps. It's still not going to be perfect. But if you look also at other players who are able to practice during these two weeks, um, I mean, they are allowed to play only two hours a day. And then if you look best of five set matches, it's usually longer than those two hours. So mm. in the end, they won't have either the uh, the perfect preparation for a Grand Slam. So yeah. this one uh, helps a bit, but uh, yeah. Do you think is this is going to benefit any style of player, like a big server maybe? I mean, I think for them it's also the same. I mean, especially if they uh, they are in a hard lockdown and you cannot serve mm. for two weeks, then it still takes time to to get used to it. And yeah. I don't really. I think it's individual. However, uh, uh, how how everyone uh, is able to do the preparation, and I think you need also a little bit of luck. So yeah. I think there is exactly a one correct way to prepare for this one and you try to do your best maybe maybe it was a good preparation maybe it wasn't but uh, in this situation i think everyone is a bit uh, unexperienced how to prepare for a grand slam in one week uh, so it, <laughs> it, it, it yeah I, I don't think it's ever going to happen like this again to be fair but you never know it's just very rare circumstances but with a big yeah. grand slam like this, do you have like a thought process in your mind of like where, how far you want to go in this tournament? Do you have like a target or do you just take each match as it comes? Oh, I mean, uh, I, ha- I have to see. Uh, uh, I just try to do my best on each match. Uh, okay. Yeah. Of course, it depends also about the, the throw a bit. If there is uh, Novak or Rafa on the first round, that's uh, <laughs> for sure trickier than against... Uh, other qualifier who was in the same situation. So uh, I think in a Grand Slam, it always depends a bit about the draw, uh, yeah. especially if you're a qualifier or one of one of those guys who are close to 100. And uh, yeah. there is for sure a different level 
where we are playing and that's why the other guys they are in top 10 or top three or whatever and, yeah, yeah definitely uh speaking about obviously you're saying about novak and uh He's been in the news, obviously, quite a lot over the past week just because he was sort of trying his best to try and get a bit more for some of the lower-ranked players. Uh, what do you, how do you feel about how the sort of media is treated? And there's some, some media saying that he's being selfish as if he wants it for himself. When I'm sure he probably has a, a mansion somewhere with a tennis court and he's probably practising right now. I don't, I, surely he's just doing it for... The people who are stuck in quarantine, like in the quarantine in the hotel. I don't exactly know what he was uh, requesting or what about. I what think he, I think he wanted more, uh, more like well, he wanted there to be an allowance maybe for like, all the people to have an access to a court for a couple of hours or have better food or there, there was just a lot of complaints from players just talking about how it's not ideal during this uh, being locked into a room for two weeks straight. For a grand slab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, especially with the food, if you have a special diet. But then, for example, I, I don't see, if, I don't fully understand the complaint about the food because you have uh, Uber Eats, for example, or you have a supermarket. Yeah. You, you can order so many things from the supermarket and then you read they have uh, so many different restaurants so yeah. I don't fully uh, understand this complaint about the food because also we get some money from the tournament and I'm sure every player here are able to order also if we wouldn't get the money for the food from the tournament we would be able to order and buy some uh, proper food so I don't fully understand that one. Uh, of course, if you would have a kitchen, you can do something else. But then, in <laughs> other, uh, other uh, hand, what what else can you cook on your own kitchen than you could get from the restaurant? So, I exactly. I don't know what you're missing. Um, for the practice, sure, it's not ideal to to practice um, two hours a day. But it's it's still a better situation than no practice at all, and uh, I I think every player was uh, aware that the first two weeks is gonna be a limited amount of practice, and uh, then you have to make your decision: do you want to play the Grand Slam? Those are the rules; you have to follow them. Do you want to play, or you want to stay at home those three four weeks? And uh, I mean, we see now, I don't know what was the cut in the end, if it was 105, if it was, if it was 110. But anyway, uh, not so many guys uh, pulled out on these uh, special uh, circumstances. Everyone knew it. And uh, I think 99% of the players or 98% of the top players wanted to do it. And yeah. they knew the rules. They still wanted to come to, to play in the... Uh, Ransom, so I don't see a reason to to complain. And you know, no, definitely not. I mean, a very positive outlook you've got. How 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 do you uh, how did you cope with jet lag and things like that when you're kind of traveling over from Europe? Because I noticed, uh, well, when you messaged me today, it was about five a.m. or something over there. Is that part of the jet lag, or is that just because you're an early riser? Early riser, he's looking for that tennis ball. <laughs> well, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not that early riser. Um, I arrived here. It was the, the first three, four days were really tricky. So uh, I even slept like seven, eight hours on my flight, which was really good. Yeah, but nice. I arrived at 30 in the morning. And then I went to bed at 9 or 10 in the, in the morning. So then I slept three, four hours. And then I was awake for two, three hours. Then I slept until 1 in the night. And then I was full awake. And the next two, three days, the same. I was always waking up between 12 and 1 in the night. Yeah. Um, yeah, then it has been getting a little bit better. It's still not perfect, but I sleep from like 8 until 3 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, it, it's better, but it's it's not perfect. <laughs> no, it sounds like a little bit of a nightmare, but uh, what better place to adjust your sleeping patterns than being in a room for uh, two weeks? Yeah, I guess. Fine. But uh, I think that's the 
that what that's why it has been also so difficult with the jet lag because I'm only in the room. You have your uh, you have your chair and you have your bed. Uh, once you yeah. go to the bed, you start to get uh, tired, and then uh, <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's easier, I think, when you can practice or leave to the city to adjust the uh, jet lag. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Whenever you want, so. No, definitely. No, I totally agree. Do you, Do you have a balcony or anything in the room, or are you just literally in just the room? Only the room. Oh, uh, just the room. <laughs> yeah, we don't have. Yeah, you're surprisingly you calm with it. I don't know. For me, if I was in a room for so long, I think I'd go crazy. I just can't deal with it. Uh, I like to just get out and about. I'm sure everyone does. I just think some people are better at dealing with it than others. I know you've got the exercise bike. I think I'd be on it all day just to try and tire myself out. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I I don't know if any of the players uh, have balconies, actually. And what I have heard from uh, some of the players that they they are not able to open the window even in their room. So yesterday oh, I was told they were they were saying about this one that they cannot even open the window. So uh, I checked my window and then I asked, "Are we allowed to open the window?" And they said, "Yeah, yeah you can." So then <laughs> then I tried to open the window. I was able to to open it, but then I saw those uh, <laughs> spider webs, or oh no, <laughs> right, under, right under my window. And uh, we are in Australia, so the slam the spiders they are here. Uh, this size. <laughs> I, I didn't see it. Luckily, I didn't see any spider. But then I decided I just keep the window open. I'm, I'm still breathing after one week. Uh, it might have stolen the tennis uh, ball. Sorry, it might have stolen your tennis ball. Yeah, I don't know, but it, the window <laughs> has been closed already for twenty four hours again. So uh, I, okay. I don't, I don't know. Let's see if I find it in, in within the, the six days now. <laughs> Definitely. That might be your lucky tennis ball. If you find the tennis ball, it might be a lucky charm. Try and sneak it in your pocket for the first match and use it for your first service game. I will try. I will try to find it <laughs> during the next time. I, I can't imagine. I looked under the bed. I looked all the bags. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll let you get on to your busy schedule ahead in your t- in your hotel room. No, uh, no. questions before we do go and i'll just it's about the draw yeah. actually when the draw is going off what's what's your sort of routine what do you usually are you always watching the draw live uh when they do the the actual first round draw for the competition do you get the chance to watch that and are you sat there like hoping for certain players or what what goes on in that sort of situation uh, i don't really uh i'm not really aware when they do the draw and uh, okay. <laughs> if I play Challenger or other tournaments, uh, I just, uh, I mean, Challenger is easy. I think it comes always on Saturday. Uh, mm. So then. Of a Grand Slam? Come on, this is a big one. It's going to excite and draw. I'll be there by the TV, mate, waiting. A bit of popcorn. Uh, I just don't know the exact time. And uh, yeah, I think I have never, uh, never watched when they made it, when, when they make it. Oh. So. Yeah, I will see. Do you have a player you want to play? Later. If you could pick a player, is there anyone you would love to play in the first round? Not really. I mean, all all of them. Uh, it will be a tough uh, task to win. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I I hope I don't need to play uh, the top ten in the first round. So that's maybe the only guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, what I what I would like, but. Uh, well, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, obviously speak about something. It's not sort of it's sort of tennis related, but sort of not tennis related. Yeah, uh, obviously we had Conor McGregor. He was coming out and talking about the Australian Open this week, and just uh, saying that the players should find themselves lucky that they're able to play the sport that they do for a living uh, in this uh, crazy time. Uh, but he is actually fighting his big fight which is going to be in about six hours' time. Will you be watching it? And if so, do you think Conor McGregor is going to win his fight against Dustin Poirier? Uh, I'm not the big specialist on the, on that sport. Um, so, yeah, for sure, we are in a very lucky situation uh, that we can play even. I think uh, the tournaments, ATP, they are doing a great work. Uh 
to try to find uh, possibilities for players to to play. I, I think it's uh, amazing in this situation. So I think a player has to be uh, very thankful for that. Uh, you cannot take it for granted that uh, we are able to play even during this time. Uh, yep. It could be easily what it was between March and August. No tournaments at all for players. So I think everyone around there is doing an amazing job to, to provide players job opportunities. So, uh, yeah, very thankful there for that. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that's one of those things that... Uh, you got to be grateful. And this time, there's a lot of people who can't work. And uh, if you're one of the fortunate people who can, then even if you're going to be locked into a hotel for two weeks and you're still going to be able to work, you're in a better position than a lot of other people in the world. So, yeah, you just got to be thankful, really, because it's a tough time for everybody right now. Yeah, and yeah, hopefully these very... times are, are going to be over soon. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's... Uh... I think all the players, they are very thankful for that. And, uh, yeah. 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 I just anyway, say... Let's wrap it up there then, Henry. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know me and Ben, we share the sentiment that we're wishing you the best for the Australian Open. Hopefully you have a brilliant tournament. Come on. Uh, we don't get a top 10 player in the first round. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Saturday, you don't take it too hard either on yourself and you get injured. So hopefully everything's going to be good. You're going to have a great tournament and we'll be watching every minute of it. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Lovely. Guys. Take, take Thanks care, everybody. Have a good one. Yeah. Good luck finding your ball. Cheers. <laughs> Indeed. See you later, yeah. mate.